Hi, it's Tom Gregory here, and welcome to this video about the Spring Boot Gradle plugin. And this plugin's great because it brings Spring Boot specific functionality to our builds. And in this video, we're going to be looking into the most common use cases, as well as how to configure it exactly to your requirements. So, let's get right into it. Simply add the latest version of the Spring Boot Gradle plugin to the plugins declaration in your build.gradle file, like this. Note that the version of the plugin applied here corresponds directly to the version of Spring Boot that you'll be targeting. And this on its own doesn't add anything extra to your build, instead the Spring Boot Gradle plugin is reactive, meaning that its behaviour changes depending on what other plugins you've applied. Let's also add the Java plugin. This core Gradle plugin provides Java compilation and testing capabilities to your project. Chances are, if you already have a Spring Boot project, you'll have the Java plugin. Now things get a bit more interesting. The Spring Boot plugin reacts to the Java plugin by adding a boot jar task which builds a fat jar containing everything required in order to run your application standalone. A boot run task which starts your application and some configuration and wiring, including disabling the jar task as it's replaced by boot jar, and hooking up the boot jar task to run whenever the Java plugin's assemble task runs. Our task graph for the assemble task now looks like this. And in Gradle, a task graph is simply a diagram of the dependencies between your different Gradle tasks. And this graph means that whenever you run Gradle W Assemble, the fat jar for your application will get created with the boot jar task. And the fat jar gets output to build libs and then your project name dash project version dot jar. The task graph for the boot run task is this. If we run Gradle W boot run, the plugin will look for a class with a public static void main method. In a Spring Boot application, this is typically a class that's annotated with Spring Boot application, which when run starts the application. We'll see some output like this telling us that the application has started successfully. If you have multiple classes with public static void main methods, you can configure which one to use like this. And now if we run boot run, we can see that it's running example application 2. The war plugin extends the Java plugin, and rather than generating the jar file, you've guessed it, it generates a war file instead. The Spring Boot Gradle plugin reacts to this plugin by creating the boot war task, which generates an executable fat war file similar to the jar. And the task graph for the boot war task looks like this. And if we run Gradle W Assemble, now the fat war will get created through the boot war task. And the fat war gets output to build libs project name dash project version dot war. And by the way, as an FYI, the contents of the war and jar files are quite similar, but they do differ in structure because the war file contains a web inf directory and the jar file a boot inf directory but they can both be executed with java-jar and the file name. And with some small changes to your configuration, the war file can also be deployed to a standalone Tomcat instance. If you apply the io.spring.dependency management plugin, then the Spring Boot Gradle plugin will import the Spring Boot dependencies BOM, or Bill of Materials, for whatever version of Spring you're targeting. This means that the plugin will know what version of Spring Boot dependencies to bring in, so you don't have to declare the versions yourself. It derives the Spring Boot version from the version of the Spring Boot plugin that you've applied, which in this case would be 226 release. Dependencies can then be declared in short form like this. Spring Boot Actuator endpoints provide a way to monitor your application. The slash actuator slash info endpoint, according to the docs, displays arbitrary application info. By default, if you hit localhost 8080 slash actuator slash info, you'll see this. And there's not much fun to be had here then. So let's fix this by getting the Spring Boot Gradle plugin to include build information by adding the configuration to build.gradle. Now the same URL returns this, and you can see that the plugin has chosen sensible defaults for all these fields. 
and any of them can be overridden using the properties configuration like this, which now returns this new configuration with the modified property. And just to explain some of the Spring Boot magic going on here, the Spring Boot Gradle plugin generates a build resources main metainf buildinfo.properties file, which Spring Boot loads into the info endpoint automatically. Eventually, once you're happy with your jar or war file, you want to publish it. And the Maven Publish plugin allows you to publish Gradle built artifacts to a Maven repository. And we can use outputs from the boot jar or boot war tasks like this by passing the task to the artifact method. And as long as you've set up your Maven repository URL and credentials, when we run Gradle W Publish, passing in a Maven user and password, we'll see that our jar file gets published. And if you want to try this out yourself, check out the video how to secure your Gradle credentials in Jenkins, where we run through exactly how to set up a local Maven repository using Apache Archiver. So hopefully you can see now how you can use the Spring Boot Gradle plugin to more tightly integrate Spring Boot into your own build. And if you'd like to learn more about Gradle, then check out some of these videos where I go into a lot more detail. So thanks a lot for watching, and if you do want to learn about other interesting videos in the future on similar topics, then please subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on Tom Gregory Tech.